Hey folks, Tim with Old School Tips and Techniques. Just wanted to reach out to you folks. We're down here in uh, southeastern Pennsylvania getting towards the late deer season. I um, hope everybody had a good holiday season, but you know, we got to get back to business here. We've got a couple weeks to chase the deer around still, and I was sitting on tree stand the other day thinking, um, you know, boy, what can I do to bring you folks something a little bit new, a little bit interesting, and maybe help you guys out? And um, I started thinking maybe I'll do a quick segment on exactly what I wear um, on tree stand uh, during these real cold mornings and real chilly late afternoon hunts. And, uh, you know, over the years, I've worn just about everything. Uh, if we go back 30 years when we used to wear the, the Granny Long John's cotton against our skin, um, after that we kind of moved, I, th I think after that we kind of went into the, the real scratchy wool that you would, you kind of put it on and grit your teeth every time you move. It would kind of felt like it had little teeth under there um, digging in. We also had uh, polypropylene years ago. I'm not sure if some of you folks remember that, but, uh, you know, it was kind of good. I mean, kind of bad. If you get a sweat coming up, that sweat would be with you for a couple hours. And um, if you got a body odor thing going on, uh, that would be with you for the life of the product. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of new options out there. And, you know, over the years, I've tried them all. Um, when we go from the, the, the undergarments to the outer layers, um, you know, I was a huge fan of wool for years. And I still think wool has its place. Um, you know, the old Pendleton wool, the old wool rich, back when these guys were... You know, they were at the top of their game. They were putting out some really high quality products. And then you get products like, um, you know, the King of the Mountain that came on the scene. Um, a real tight woven wool uh, that's machine washable. So, I mean, that was a huge game changer right there in itself. Um, you know, my wife and I, we even repped King of the Mountain for a number of years. Uh, but, hey, guys, there's some new players in the game. Sitka Gear. Um, is coming out with some fantastic products. And, you know, I want to go over those options with you and, you know, kind of help, you know, put these on a scale, see which ones, you know, are going to be more in your favor. Uh, you know, again, to keep you warm, to take that chill off, to let you sit on stand an extra 10 minutes, an extra half an hour uh, to maybe uh, get that shot that you wouldn't have had. And, you know, by the end of the segment, I want to touch base on, on some of the footwear. Um, a lot of us used to wear the, the heavy leather boots that we were dressing up. Um, also, you know, there's some new high-tech um, knee-high rubber boots that a lot of folks out there, you know, really believe in, especially the folks down south in the swamp areas. Um, but before we go, we want to touch on, you know, the hybrid, uh, leather upper, rubber bottoms, um, the Schnee boots, uh, fantastic, you know, quality product. Kenetrex is another product out there that's very similar, that just does a good job giving us just, you know, one more option, one more choice out there. Uh, to wear in the woods and um, you know options are good that's, that, that's real good to have so you know let's get into it let's take this for a little ride we'll see where it goes and um, again hopefully by the end of the video if you're looking for some new clothes now or if you're kind of fast forward looking towards uh, next year um, maybe we can point you in the direction you know thanks for checking in appreciate it we'll be right back Folks, Tim with Old School Tips and Techniques, uh, back with a little bit of a conversation going here on uh, what I like to wear in the winter months on tree stand. Now, you know, I want you guys to understand that I hunt in the east most of the time. A lot of you guys that are out west and are running and gunning all the time, um, you know, hiking 15 miles a day, uh, stalking, um, you know, it's, it's going to be really different for you guys, and I understand that. So I want you guys to also understand that this is from my perspective, hunting in the East Coast. Most of my walks to my tree stands, you know, 500 yards, quarter mile, maybe. Um, and then I'm up, I sit, and then I'm back to the truck and I'm warm and I'm back home in the house. So I, you guys have to understand, so it's a lot different if you're going to be out west going back to a spike camp or what have you. Uh, so I just want to clarify that. Um, I want to kind of, I want to start from the ground up here. Um, so we're going to talk before we get into the outer layers of what I really like, the outer garments, I want to discuss, you know, what needs to be against your skin. And, you know, take a look at some of these high-end hiking stores, the REIs and things like that, and understand that 
these people that are out doing the hiking, that these guys are spending a lot of time out in the elements. And um, just because they're hiking or mountain climbing doesn't mean they don't know what they're talking about. And uh, when it comes to a lot of this clothing and gear, I've taken a lot of advice from those kind of folks um, in order to prepare for me sitting in tree stand and, and it works. I mean, it's worked wonders. So um, let's get started here. Against our skin, um, from our feet to our legs to our chest to my head is always all the time from the time it starts getting chilly in October is Merino wool. Um, there's a lot of different brands out there, uh, a lot of directions you can go. Um, Smart wool is what I always started with. I do tend to stick with that. Um, every company out there that is producing some type of outer gear, the Sitka gears, the Kui gears, they all produce their version of Merino wool, which is a very highly processed, soft Merino wool. And what I really like about it is it has an incredible ability to help us maintain our body temperature. So if you get into a little bit of a sweat, it does wonders wicking away that sweat and also at the same time keeping you warm. You don't get that chill and maintain that chill. Um, it's just fantastic. As a matter of fact, I have several, not one of these, but several short sleeve shirts that I wear to work all winter long, just a short sleeve merino wool because it just seems to really regulate body temperature and you just never really get cold. And um, so anytime I'm hunting, anytime I'm out with a dog, anytime I do anything in the wintertime, um, outdoors, I'm a very avid golfer. I spend an awful lot of time on the golf course in the winter months. Um, it's always going to be merino wool against your body, against your skin. Never, ever cotton. You know, cotton is cold cotton. Once you sweat in it, it stays wet, it stays damp. And once you get that chill, guys, it's hard to make it go away. Okay, so rather than strip down here, I'm gonna kinda of have everything set up here. Um, this is a pair of Sitka Merino wools. It's very light, it's very comfortable. I couple this with a thin pair of Merino wool socks, smart wool. And then on top of these thin socks, I go with a heavier layer of Merino wool socks. Okay, so that's against, that's what I'm doing for my feet and what I'm doing for my legs. Again, a thin layer of merino wool. I do not go too heavy on the merino wool because I, on my legs because I want it to be comfortable. Um, and again, right now we're talking about layering all the way up for a very cold day here in Pennsylvania. So again, merino wool against my legs. When we go to the upper body, um, this is a smart wool shirt, uh, long sleeve. And again, folks, you are gonna pay for smart wool. Um, or any type of merino wool. It's, it, the process um, is expensive. Um, what I really like about it is it wears extremely well. Um, I think I've had this shirt for a couple years. Um, understand, don't overwash it. It has natural lanolins built into it that help absorb body odor. So you can wear this shirt. Let's just say you're gonna wear it every day back and forth to work. Let's say you work outside. You can wear this for a solid week um, and do the underarm test. Um, it does not retain body odor. Okay, so don't overwash it. It doesn't need to be overwashed. Okay, so this is on my upper body against my skin, another layer of merino wool. Before we get to the outer garments, I'm gonna go right up into the head. Whenever I hunt, I have a, here we have it. It's a very thin merino wool hat. I'm not sure who makes this one, probably smart wool. Um, this is always my base layer. And I say a base layer on my head because I'm a huge fan of two hats. So what I like to do in the winter time is I walk into my stand with this hat on. I always have a hat tucked in here. As it gets colder, I do another hat right on top of it. Um, it just does wonders for keeping your warm. If you can keep these extremities warm here and your toes, uh, things are going to really work out for you as far as getting that extra time in the stand. So there you have it for everything from my toes to my head up to my ears. Um, we go with some type of layer of merino wool. I don't care what you wear outside of this on the outer layers. Please 
give the merino wool a chance, put it against your skin, whatever you wear on the outside over and above um, is just going to benefit from what is against your skin. Okay, so um, I think you guys got my point, stressed it a few times there. Okay, so after we have the merino wool, we're gonna go on to our next layer. And a lot of times I'll throw on whatever I have. Um, this is a Sitka shirt. Um, anything that has a little bit of higher collar on it, uh, just to keep that air from going down the back of my shirt. Uh, I'm not, again, I'm not sure uh, what brand you guys favor, but go with something that's gonna have a higher collar for your next uh, layer. After that, this is a Kelvin Sitka undergarment, okay? This is where I, uh, this is what I really think is the ticket for uh, keeping you warm. It is primal loft, it's very light. Um, you see a lot of Patagonia jackets of people, these little puffy jackets that folks are wearing these days. This is the same thing. This is just a camo version. I do not wear it on the outside. It's got a little bit of noise to it. If it catches on any type of greenbrier or branch, um, you know, it's not very durable. It's not to be meant to be worn as an outer garment as much as an under layer. Okay, so this is going to go on next. I have the exact same thing for my legs in long pants. Okay, so merino wool against your skin, a primal loft layer is next in line. And what I really like about this, and I, and I want to show you, um, I want to show you something that uh, has really sold me on this. When you put this type of clothing on, this primal loft clothing, whether it be a, um, a long sleeve or a vest, I use vests a lot of times when I play golf. What I really like about it as an undergarment is the ability to put an outer layer on top of it. And what, what you really maintain with hunting is it never binds you up because again, it's slippery underneath. So it's always has freedom of movement. And that's the big thing. Hey, there's a king of the mountain wool jacket right here. I love wool. I hunted in it for years, but I was always cold. I think the air cut through it pretty darn good. Um, and the big problem that I had with it is as you continue to layer, especially if you layer with wool, it gets to be the point where you, you're having a hard time moving. And with this type of undergarment, and then what this here is, is a, um, it's a Sitka jacket, a Stratus jacket. It doesn't have much weight to it, but it has a wind block in it. So what I have is merino wool against my skin to maintain my body temperature, a primal loft layer to use as an insulating layer to keep the heat in, and then a windbreak to keep the heat in even more and to break any breezes if you're hunting out there in 15, 20 mile an hour winds, you know, a 30 degree temperature can feel like 10 really quickly. But, you know, this is my setup. Um, it's very light, there's not a whole lot to it. If I do have a long walk into a tree stand, I can kind of drop this outer layer off, uh, attach it to my climbing tree stand if I'm going in that route that day. And when I get to stand, I can then layer up with my outer layers. But you know, again, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Sitka gear. I'll tell you why, guys, is because I think last year or the year before, I kind of kept count on how many times I hunted. I sat stand 86 times that year. And, um, you know, I hope my wife's not listening. That's an awful lot of times on tree stand. And when it comes to late season, November, December, and January hunting, this Sitka gear, it gets thrashed. I wear it every single day and I'm on blood trails, I'm in greenbrier patches, and it holds up. I've never had it tear on me. Um, what I like about it for my size, I'm not a very big guy. I'm 5'9", 165 pounds, um, and you know, 32 inch waist with 42 inch shoulders. So I'm athletic fit, and it's not baggy on me. Um, it fits nice where it's supposed to be. Uh, when I put this jacket on, let me slip this back on for you guys for a second. Um, as bow hunters, 
We're always concerned about this area for string clearance, whether it be a compound, whether it be a long bow, a self bow, a recurve, it doesn't matter. We need clearance here. This fits really tight through here. I don't like leather arm guards. If the string hits them, they're loud. Um, I don't get any string contact. I've hunted with this jacket for two or three years and I don't get any string contact. There's no wear here for me shooting and I get really good clearance. Um, you know, so that's really important. Uh, the other thing I really like about this jacket in particular, is a matter of fact, let's do this. Let me sign off for a second here. Let me get dressed up in my gear. And then I want my daughter who's on camera today to come back in. I just want to show you um, some of the fine points, some of the things their Sitka gear addresses when they're building this, this clothing that a lot of other companies don't address. So uh, let me sign off, we'll be right back. All right guys, so I'm semi-dressed here. I didn't put on a lot of the undergarments because I'm inside and I don't want to get overheating here. But so if you think my jacket's a little bit baggy, it's because I don't have a lot of the undergarments on. Um, so just to recap real quick, we have um, some type of merino wool against our skin. We have a primal loft layer um, on top of the merino wool, which is going to provide insulation and it's going to provide that, that real slippery undergarment so that our outer garment slips on top of that and doesn't bind us up. Okay, um, my top layer here that I really prefer, this is my second round with this clothing. I had a, another camo pattern years ago um, with the Sitka gear is uh, the Stratus. Okay, so it has a little bit of a wind block in it. It's not a heavy garment by any means. Um, and I also have the Stratus pants on here. So what I wanna do is uh, give you an idea of some of the small things that Sitka does that I really like. Um, so I'm sitting in stand. And, you know, hands are, are hands and gloves, sometimes they don't really go along with hunting because, you know, if you're shooting a tab, if you're shooting a glove, if you're shooting a release, uh, what have you, you know, I like the dexterity of having my fingers available. So a lot of times I don't use gloves and, um, but I need my hands to stay warm. So what I like about the way the Sitka gear is designed is when you sit down, they have these two big like cargo pants pockets. Uh, on the side here and your hands just fit in them perfectly. Um, you're not having to, uh, to move, twist or anything. Your hands kind of slide in. So that's going to be the first place that I would put my hands if my hands get cold. Um, if I need my hands to be a little bit warmer, the way they cut their pants pockets, they're kind of squared off on the side. I can still get my hands into my pockets here. Now, this is going to provide just a little bit, you know, more warmth than my leg pockets. Um, if I'm sitting up there and it's a very nice, you know, mellow day, not too, temperatures aren't too cold, I just have the, the jacket pockets here. So I've got three different options as far as keeping my hands warm, and they're all very easily accessible. Uh, so that's wonderful. Um, that, that's huge for me. Um, the other thing I like about the pants pockets is they're big enough that I can stuff gloves in if I need it, um, my second hat if I need it. And the other thing that I always carry, I hope it's in here, I always have a small merino wool neck warmer. Um, I think this is Kui gear here. Um, and that's just my that's kind of like my, my bailout. It's like, oh gosh, I didn't know it was going to get this cold. What do I do now? I can throw it on as an extra layer on my neck, or I can throw it on as just an extra layer over my hats or what have you. So I always have, I always have this layer with me, um, you know, again, to fall back on in case it gets pretty cold. And it just fits in here half the time, you know, it stays in there and I don't even know I have it. Um, another side little pocket over here, I always kind of throw my truck keys in or a couple uh, paper towels in case your nose gets running, um, things like that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to um, really mention to you is I love chest pockets. You know, these chest pockets up here are fantastic. If you are a compound shooter, um, very easy to get your range finder out and stow it back in. Uh, the other thing, which is in your left pocket, as I said, in your left pocket, in my left pocket, in everybody's left pocket, is our cell phone. Um, guys, don't hook it to your bag. 
hang it on the tree where you can see who's texting you. Uh, this does you no good at all if you fall out of the tree. Um, watch keeping it in your pants pockets. If you fall out of a tree um, and you go to a fetal position, it's always going to be very close here for you guys to call for help. You know, so be very careful um, where you put this. You know, the purpose of having a phone with you when you're hunting out of tree stands is people do fall. Um, I had a little incident earlier in the season that I'll get back to you guys on. I did walk away from it, but it really, uh, it left me with my eyes wide open. But I have several friends that have taken a tumble out of a tree. Uh, one of them was pretty darn severe, um, and he was able to... Uh, crawl and call me on his cell phone and let me know that he needed help. So uh, left pocket all the time, cell phone. Um, plus a lot of the phones these days have find your friends and if your spouse or best friend has that number and you fall and you are unconscious, they can always search for your phone and um, you know come when you need some help. Um, let's get into boots real quick and then we're gonna cut this segment uh, short. If you guys have questions, please reach out to me in the comments. Um, I don't want to blast wool. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are real into wool. It's just not for me. This is all about personal preference. I'm just doing this video based on what works for me. Um, I love this uh, Sitka gear setup that I've been using for years, and I love it for the mobility, the able, the ability to um, to layer, um, and, and for the, just the sheer lightness of it. Um, I really got tired over the years of just bundling up so much that if a deer did come along, um, it was very difficult to uh, get myself into a position to shoot. Um, as far as boots go, I mentioned two brands that I really like. Um, one is Kenetrex and one is Schnee's. Um, they're both hybrid type boots. Um, I'm not a big fan of knee-high rubber boots. Um, my feet sweat in those boots and, you know, if I do walk into stand, even if I'm sitting in stand, um, inactive my feet will still start sweating and the next thing you know my feet are cold um, so um, i'm just not a big fan of rubber boots again guys down south i know love them and uh, they definitely have their place in maybe some of the uh, the areas that have a lot wetter ground scenarios but um the boots that i really prefer this is my number one boot uh this particular one here is a schnee's boot um, it's a hybrid leather uppers this does have a liner in it um, I'm not sure which one this is. Maybe it's called an Outfitter. Um, I'm also not sure how high, maybe 12 inches high. But uh, what I like about this with regard to bow hunting is I love the bottom. Um, if you guys are in an area that you need some type of tire tread, I understand. But here where I hunt, um, I, 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 I'm just a huge fan of the tire tread. And the reason being it does not hold mud. It doesn't hold dirt. And um, too many times I've been up in the tree stand and um, had some type of shoe with a heavier Vibram type sole on the bottom. And when you move, uh, the dirt trickles down and uh, pretty much gives you away if there's any deer in the area. So uh, anytime you see me, 90% um, of the time it's going to be with tire tread bottoms. I think they're much quieter. They're almost like a uh, modern day moccasin. Um, problem that I have with these is when it gets to November, late November, uh, my feet get cold. The double layer socks don't work quite as well. Uh, so what I do is I, I go over to one that's just a little heavier. Um, this is a, a Kenetrex version here. You can see they're very similar. Uh, leather uppers, rubber bottoms. This one has air bob soles on the bottom. Um, it does have a tendency to hold things in the bottom. However, the bottom's thicker. Um, and it gives me a little extra layer there. So when thin times get a little bit colder, I, I kind of uh, bump from uh, the tire tread up to these just for the uh, sole purpose of warmth. But uh, there's a lot of other boots out there that will offer you the same type of, uh, a little dirt on the wife's table there, um, offer you the same type of protection. You know, when it gets cold on your feet, the thicker the sole, a lot of guys out there wear Mickey Mouse boots, the thicker the sole, um, you know, the more distance you're going to have for that coldness to come through to your feet. So uh, again, on the feet, we go with a real thin layer of merino wool. We go with a heavier layer and then we go to, um, I go personally to a hybrid type boot. But um, I hope that helps you guys out a little bit. Maybe it'll give you uh, um, a little direction if you're buying clothes. Uh, all this gear is expensive. Um, it's expensive because 
There's a lot of engineering that goes into uh, developing it. Um, it wears for years and years. You're not going to have to rebuy it after a couple years. Uh, buy a piece here and there. That's what I do. Um, as a piece looks like it's showing a little sign, I'll buy a new piece and um, pass the other one down in the family or pass it on to a friend. Try to get them to be a believer also. So um, thanks again for checking in. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, we'll catch back up with you uh, down the road and uh, maybe provide a few uh, little tips, techniques that uh, can help you along your journey. Take care, folks.